It's my uh, pleasure to be here uh, today. My name is uh, Marina Wes, and uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the uh, head of the World Bank office here in uh, Warsaw. Um, and uh, I have very much appreciated, personally, the cooperation uh, that we have had uh, with IBS for a number of years now. And of course, institutionally, the World Bank is also very happy um, to be uh, a partner in the discussion that, that we're having today and tomorrow on, on some of these uh, very important issues. Um, I'm actually a macroeconomist by training, so I feel a, a little intimidated um, being surrounded by so many uh, labor economists. I'm going to be very brief, and I'm going to make four points um, that uh, hopefully will help stage some of the discussions in, in the next two days. And I have to say at the outset that many of these points are taken from uh, our upcoming World Development Report, which deals with uh, technology uh, and development. Okay, so my first point, uh, maybe the least surprising one, um, but it's always nice when the data uh, do confirm um, some of the issues you wanted to confirm. My first point is that uh, ICT capital, and that's really a proxy for technology, it's not a perfect proxy, but let's not go into that, that ICT capital has been a major driver of global growth. Um, the charts here show that um, in the past 20 years, about one-fifth of growth has been driven by ICT capital. Uh, these, are, these are growth decom decompositions. And what we see, the chart on the left looks at high-income countries, the chart on the right looks at emerging economies. And what we see that, uh, is that ICT capital um, ac uh, accounted for a larger share of total growth in um, high-income countries. Although if you look at the percentage points, in, in many cases the percentage uh, point contribution was actually higher um, in emerging economies. Um, if anything, these, these figures are likely to be an underestimate for, for a number of reasons. Uh, there are direct, indirect effects that are hard to measure. And I think traditionally um, it, it's taken us some time uh, to, um, to, uh, to know how to measure technological change in, in the national accounts. Um, for instance, I, I was reading over the weekend as, as I was thinking about this presentation, that the U.S. national accounts did not reflect the output from automobiles for 15 years after the Ford Model T, the first mass-produced car. Uh, so similarly, I think on the, on the national account side, we're still very much uh, trying to come to terms with how do we measure the impact of, of Internet technology. My second point is... Um, that, um, and I think this is particularly relevant for the conference today, but, but it's also uh, a, a very uh, important point more broadly, that um, internet has had a significant internet, and when I say internet, I mean digital technologies more broadly, has had a significant impact on output um, and on jobs. Although when you look at the direct impact, and, and this follows up, I think, on a point that Piotr already made, the direct impact is actually quite small. So um, this is very similar to your Angry Birds example, but um, if you look, at, um, if you look at, at 2014 figures, Facebook had a market capitalization of $120 million, which was the same at the time as Volkswagen, okay? But um, Volkswagen employed 563,000 people, whereas Facebook employed 6,300 people, okay? So um, the, direct, um, the direct impact uh, on job creation in the ICT sectors is, is often relatively small. And um, it, it, it typically accounts in OECD countries, the digital economy, for about 4 to 7% of, of total employment. Um, my third point is that um, as we think about uh, the digital economy going forward, the kinds of skills that, that will be required uh, from workers um, are, uh, are, are quite 
different than the types of skills that, that may have been uh, required uh, in the past. So in many of the new economy jobs, you need higher order cognitive and, and social emotional skills. Um, and uh, there is much less of a requirement for, uh, for routine, um, routine type of skills. So there's a much greater emphasis on reasoning, on problem solving, on critical thinking, uh, on teamwork, attitudes. Um, and of course this has implications uh, for, for lifelong learning and, and for the education system, uh, both uh, at, at the earlier levels in one's life, as well as when we talk about lifelong learning. Um, I mean, on, on the one hand, there's never been a better time to be a well-educated worker, but, but on the other hand, there's a big policy agenda trying to prepare workers to be ready, uh, or future workers to be ready um, for, for this digital economy, for this, um, for, for, for this new technology-driven world. And really what this chart shows is that globally work is becoming more intensive in non-routine scales. My final point, um, is that um, although we are talking um, about the important implications of, of, of the impact of technology, um, actually uh, there is a continuing significant uh, global digital divide, both among countries and in many cases also uh, within country. Um, so the internet remains unavailable, inaccessible, and unaffordable to the majority of the world's population. Um, so just looking briefly at a few global figures, um, for every person connected to broadband, five are not. Uh, worldwide, there are four billion people that do not have access in the, uh, to the internet. There are two billion people that don't have a mobile phone. And um, these, di these um, divisions are not only among countries, but also we see within countries, and, and the figures on the right-hand side of, the, um, of this slide um, are for Africa, but similar figures, um, similar differences are observed globally. We see that digital access is generally lower among the less well-off, among women in rural areas, and among older people. Now, since, um, since uh, I think a lot of the discussion is going to focus on, on high-income countries, maybe uh, just in closing, um, in, in Europe, in, in, in other high-income countries, uh, clearly um, in internet access is, is generally good. However, we still see that there are quite large divides in digital use. Okay, so even if people have access, it doesn't mean they use it, for instance, to, to renew their driver's license, to, uh, to book their airplane tickets, to, uh, to do their shopping, um, or, for, or in their interaction with, with the public sector. So within the EU, for instance, citizens in the bottom 20% of income in the least connected EU country are 45 times less likely to use e-services than those in the top 20% of income in the most connected EU country. So in short, even within the EU, we still see very large uh, differences in, in digital use. So these were just some broad observations. I hope some of them will uh, help uh, set the stage uh, for, for our discussions today and tomorrow. So in closing, thank you for, um, for enabling this uh, facilitation, this cooperation, and I look forward to um, our work together going forward.